Yeah. And I'm stood next to my friend Annie, and we're both in our late twenty, you know, yeah, late twenties, and we just looked at each other and was like, "We've made it." What happens? Where are we? <laughs> how did we get from having this chat like a month ago? How we stood here drinking port on Seve Ballesteros's mm -hmm. balcony at Seve's house overlooking the ocean. Like, how did that happen? All right, everybody, welcome back to the Mizuno booth here at the PGA Show. Uh, today we've got one of our, honestly, one of the guests I've been most excited since we started this podcast to get on the podcast. Yes. And that is our friend from Mizuno, David Matthews. How you doing? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. What a, what a strange introduction. <laughs> <laughs> that Do you want me to go Ameri bigger with it? No, that's that's fine. That, was, that was big enough. That was plenty big enough. <laughs> well, listen, we know you're one who doesn't normally like to talk about yourself. You know, you, you're kind of a more in the shadows kind of a guy, but yeah. we've always been, we've been working together for the last, I want to say about a year or so yeah. now, and in soap, been really impressed with, with you and stuff and wanted to kind of have a conversation to talk just to get to know a little bit more about you, but also, you know, you've got a really unique uh, outlook on the golf space, having done it for so long, especially with a brand like Mizuno, having seen it from both the UK side, the US side. Anyway, I'm rambling on, but just kind of wanted to, uh, yeah, kind of yeah, have a little yeah, chat with you. First of all, just give the audience a taste of who you are at Mizuno, what you do, and kind of how long you've been here. Okay, let's start with what I do then. So I do a lot of the creative, yep. hence working with you guys. Yeah, yep. unfortunately. Content space, and whether it's the ad or a strap line or anything that's kind of pretty on the front end is what I get involved in. Um, been doing it for 26 years at Mizuno. And when I joined, we didn't have email. So do you know so that's gone, we've gone through quite a lot of stages. <laughs> You've been the first website. <laughs> you know, when I, when I joined, it was, it was a really easy job, to be honest. It was a print ad, a catalog. You know, if you were lucky, you did a TV ad. And then you kind of mingled and kind yeah. of thought for a couple of months. And then we started the cycle again. And in that time, we've gone from websites, the first forums, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, yeah. and exploded into where we are now with podcasts and social and yeah, I, I the, would the world's just changed vastly. Want to call attention? You've been with Mizuno longer than I've been alive. Yeah, I've had so some you, you know I've your had stuff. Some really scared. Yeah, no, but I've not just been me. here a long time. But not him. <laughs> you yeah, got me by a year. Right, okay, okay. Wow, that's a way to make me feel old. I mean, guys. <laughs> Well, uh, well, incredible. Now you met, and you meet a lot of people in that time, right? Oh and, yeah, oh, sure. Like generations of people, and it's interesting. That what keeps it fresh is the way it changes, and like the approach to how we talk to people and how we present yeah. ourselves. And you've gone from a skill set where the skill was to take all these stories and somehow fit it into one page in a magazine that yeah. meant something and summarize what you were doing. To now this like infinite space where you can say as much as you want all the time. Mm -hmm. And now it's about detail and depth and all these yeah. different platforms and things you can say and how you can say it. And hence why people like yourselves are now in the space. And it's helped me and it's helped Mizuno particularly because we're a company with mm -hmm. a lot of stories and a lot of depth. Oh, yeah. And Definitely. it was hard to fit it in one page and one poster and a catalogue. And now, you, you know, especially YouTube's like, you know, just revolutionised everything. Oh, yeah. Yep. And the amount of, the way we can expose the truth of Mizuno is so much easier now. And when so, you're working so, with something good, right? Yeah. You don't necessarily need a strap line or a cool line mm -hmm. or a whiz tech or yeah. whatever it is that other people have been doing for so long. Mm -hmm. The more detail you can include, the better Mizuno gets. So hence why I, this for me is more enjoyable now probably than it was back then. Because how the hell do you compound all that yeah, into tough. a page? Yeah, you got to be a lot more. I mean, not that you're not intentional now, but yeah, like you're saying, Mizuno has such a legacy and such depth to the story and the company that that's really hard to fit in one page in a magazine. Correct. And now that we have this kind of open field to work with, with, you know, technology and different platforms that have, have come into, into play, there's so much more you can do but you have to still be intentional with how you're going about it. And so I have honestly loved working with you, especially on the Mizuna side and, and being able to really think through what those stories are now that you have all this room to tell those stories. Yeah. So. And I guess the danger is with so much room and so many things you could just throw mud at the wall. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. I think and I, I wonder about the next generation of people who didn't come from that era where mm -hmm. you had to compound what you were saying and summarize mm -hmm. and be succinct. Yeah. when you don't need to anymore. Yeah. I think actually having that skill set when you've transitioned from the world of print and people drawing things and the first catalogs where I had to drive to the printer and it was all laid out and the mm -hmm. first films where it was shot on film, not on, was no digital. Yep. I think when you've come from that world, I think it's a massive advantage having seen that and been there and then transition into this world. I think yeah. that's a huge advantage. 
I wonder what it's going to look like in 10 years time for people yeah. that grew up when you've only grown up with emails and WhatsApps and Instagram mm -hmm. and yeah. how the hell do you create a skill set where you can summarize again? Yeah. I don't know. I think you may see it. I mean, trends happen and, and things come in and go out and come back in again. I think that's really, I mean, that's definitely coming from a person of, of experience, you know, be having I like that. that. A person of experience, not an old person. A person, <laughs> person, of, experience. A person of extreme experience. <laughs> you said that no. really well. <laughs> um, having that, you know, knowledge to be able to talk about kind of the landscape, right? And identifying the fact that when you had to be succinct and, and real stuff in, you, you generate a skill by, you know, necessity, by having Correct. to do that. Now, not so much. What my thought is, is I think you'll definitely see a generation of people come up that have all the tools in the toolbox, all the freedom, all the paint to do whatever they want. And I think later down the road, you'll probably start to see it. I mean, you'll see it widen. And then I think you'll probably start to see it narrow, narrow and scale back down, back down because you'll have so much yeah. garbage. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think because of the, I mean, you got things like TikTok and then like the Instagram algorithm has changed so much to where it's just like mass amounts of content all the time in such a short amount of time. I was reading a report the other day that, that was talking about how it is kind of coming full circle again and that brands that have strong messaging, strong stories and are are there for entertainment instead of just, you know, mindless scrolling yeah. are really going to start to see kind of uh, uh, get a leg up on the rest of the competition. And so the fact that Mizuno for such a long time has always had that deep, rich storytelling, I, I think just is perfect segue into kind of this new era of content. Yeah, well, and let's, that's, hope, let's hope it goes that way because, yes. yeah. I mean, what a boring place when it's just infinite space and everyone's just mm -hmm. throwing stuff at the wall. I mean, yeah. there's a, as a consumer, how do you deal with that, scrolling yeah. through that phone? It's not good for any of mm -hmm. us, is it? No. Mm -hmm. So if there was a little bit more, yeah. I guess, summary to it and a little bit narrow and a little bit more depth and mm -hmm. a little bit more quality to what we were consuming, I think that would be a, yeah. a better, better way of doing things. Well, that's kind of my question for you then. You know, obviously, you know, as a man of rich experience, <laughs> as, we're, as, as we're wording it, thank nice you, job. thank you. Yes, copywriter. Um, <laughs> as you have that experience and you've seen, obviously, what we've gone through print ads, we've gone through uh, broadcast commercials, and then all the way to the now the TikTok, YouTube, Instagram generation, as those deliverables and methods have changed, what stayed the same? What's been one thing that in your experience you've seen, like, no matter what the element we're presenting in, mm -hmm. what do you need to make sure you have? Authenticity, truth, and then if you can polish it a little bit. That's even better. But I think, listen, my, my, my experience is narrow in some ways because most of my work and experience has been with one company, right? right. And the one thing I figured out very early was the truth was more interesting than most of the stories that people make up. If you're inventing the story, it, it, I don't know, it's, it's just so damned obvious, right? Mm. You, can, you can see through a campaign and a strap line. Yeah. And mm -hmm. The truth, if you can find the truth, if the truth is interesting enough and you can expose it and polish it, and present it in a certain way, that always works much better, right? That worked better as a print ad, it worked better as a magazine piece, it works better as a YouTube video, yeah. all the way down to a reel of a guy mm -hmm. in Japan forging the clubs with the giant press. Mm -hmm. That's still, in every generation of media, still yeah. the most consumed, popular, yeah. impressive, conversational thing that we do. So the core of it's never really changed, and it. We've tried everything, right? And we've all tested mm -hmm. different things, but always come back to the same story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, so the, yeah, the, the, the truth. There's a reason. And a polished a polish version, the truth is even better, but yeah. if you can expose it and highlight it, and that, that always seems yeah. to work better than anything else. Yeah. But an agree. attention grab is always an attention grab, right? It's totally. always transparent. Yeah. But if there's something on the other side of it, that always works much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I want to shift gears just a little bit. Uh, obviously, you've been with Mizuno for a very long time. What was kind of your uh transition i guess into mizuno like what what was your experience prior to that that landed you here um i wanted to be a journalist a sports journalist okay i tried business i, I tried being in pr agencies and i'd sold a bit of media i've been in publishing and i was right on the verge of wanting to make a change so i didn't really care about numbers and mm -hmm. money and business was kind of all over my head mm -hmm. but i did like i did like writing and i love mm -hmm. sport yeah and i was my next move was sports journalism mm -hmm. And then the job at Mizuno came up, it was a PR job, and we thought, well, let's give it one more go. Yeah. Maybe if I'm in sport, uh -huh. maybe I'll find it within me to be motivated enough to go to work nice. every day and care about the results. That is quite one more go. Yeah. 27 yeah, years yeah, after was, one more go. It was one more go and just see, 
could I care enough about the consequences mm -hmm. to put an effort in? And yeah. I, you know, I'd found it hard before. And there you go, 26 and, years later. And you weren't, correct me if I'm wrong, but you weren't a golfer prior to... I was one of those kids that just played everything, right? One, okay. It would be table tennis for three months. We'd get the gear, try that, <laughs> move on. <laughs> Football, soccer was my first kind of love. Yeah, and yeah. still is. Yeah. Um, and I still feel like an outsider in golf now, even with all those years behind yeah, me. Yeah, we were talking about I that. I still think yeah. like you're either from a golf family or you're mm -hmm. not. And I didn't come from a golf family. Gotcha. I taught my dad to play golf later in his life. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I still feel like an outsider now. Mm. I still feel like I'm visiting from football, <laughs> <laughs> which can't be true, can it, after 26 years? But yeah, nope. it, still, it still feels a little that way. Wow. Nice. I feel, I mean, we've, we've been doing what we've been doing for about two and a half years, which is, you know, not, it's short, but I still feel like an outsider. I know the first time that we chatted i was like why are, why are they talking to us <laughs> <laughs> like and you know we had a portfolio we've been doing some stuff we'd work with some cool people but like it's still surprising me to that i still feel like an outsider sometimes to this day okay how, how hard are they pushing right we got, okay. we got five minutes Okay. All right, we'll, All right. we'll, be, we'll be done in five. We'll wrap and head out. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Well, they're kicking us out. That cut pretty much right there. We can cut where I was finishing. People, should I we finish. talk about people quick? And then we, yeah, let's do yeah. that and then wrap it up. Go for it. Or who, what, what question you want to ask question. to lead into it? An influential, interesting people that you might have met. Let's just throw some names in. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, yeah. As you've kind of worked throughout your career, if you've done all this, Mizuno has a chance to have worked with a lot of different athletes and a lot of people in the company, outside of the company. Who have kind of been some of the interesting people you've been able to meet throughout your career? I mean, such a mix of people. And you just feel like such a, I don't know, fake like what's, what's, what's that? Imposter a, syndrome? Imposter syndrome, right? Yeah. How, can you, how can you meet Sevi Ballesteros? Yeah as a like 28 year old, <laughs> right, relatively fresh in the golf industry. Yeah. I like the most surreal moment of my life was meeting Seve, we signed him in the year 2000 when he was without a sponsor. And he was just so perfectly matched to Mizuno, right? Yeah. Come, nothing feels like a Mizuno, grain flow forging. Mm -hmm. Who do you want to do? You want the best field player that yeah. ever existed to say the line, nothing feels like a Mizuno. Yeah. And Seve was out of contract. We knew he liked our irons. He played them previously. Back in the old days of marketing, you could play one set in Japan and another set in the West, oh, right? Interesting. So Seve was sponsored to Mizuno when he was in Japan and possibly Slazenger when he played in the mm. States. Wow. And, uh, there, was a, even a, there was a conversation that maybe it was a bit of lead tape on the back of one uh -huh. set of clubs and it came off and on depending on where he was playing. But yeah. mm. we had a relationship with him. We went to meet him. And f from an idea that we'd had, so suddenly I was in his house having lunch with him, wow. with his family, with a really good friend of mine, Andy Kikadas, who left the company about 10 years ago, but was a great guy. And we went together and we met Seve. We met him on the range in Padrina. We went to his house, we had lunch. Seve cleared my plate wow. Oh, wow. Wow. and washed up. And we ended up on the balcony drinking port with Seve's label on it. No way. And man. I'm stood next to my friend, Andy, and we're both in our late 20s. You know, yeah, late 20s, and we just looked at each other and was like, We've made it. What happens? Where are we? <laughs> how did we get from having this chat like a month ago? How we stood here drinking port on Seve Ballesteros' mm -hmm. balcony at Seve's house overlooking the ocean? Like, how did that Incredible. happen? And that's been like a running theme, really. We've met, I mean, we've met so many, but what a guy he was, by the way. Yeah. Mm. Like, everything you've heard is true. Like, wow. the most phenomenal, warm, human being you've yeah. ever met in your life he remembered my name he didn't need to know my yeah. name but yeah. he remembered yeah. my name i met him on the 18th green at st andrews in the year 2000 he'd agreed to come and do some interviews and some signings on the mizuno stand how's he going to remember to meet me on the 18th green at st andrews he missed the cut by one maybe there's a billion people around the green yeah. mm -hmm. and he remembered to look up for the young guy from mizuno who's meeting to come to the stand and he looked at me and waved me Jeez. onto the green and we went together no way that's incredible who remembers to do that especially when they've just missed the cut mm -hmm. on their last open at St. Andrews and he remembered his obligations and came and did that one. I mean, yeah. Phenomenal man, remembered everybody's name, made everybody feel welcome. Just that, that's got to be a highlight. I don't think you can Definitely. beat that. But just so many people along the way and really special people. You know, we've, we spent time with Luke Donald and mm -hmm. Nick Faldo and mm -hmm. more recently, let's jump all the way to Grant and Garrett. Yeah. Oh, what the good interesting yeah. guys mm -hmm. they were. Yeah. And I mean, Garrett's just a phenomenal creative mm -hmm. yeah. changed the space changed everything right yeah. Yeah. What, 
very impressive totally. guy for a young man to sit and talk to him and just be like blown away by mm -hmm. somebody less than half your age with yeah. his energy and creativity and just just a, a phenomenal guy again really creative and hope he hope he does great i'm sure yeah. he will um yeah just so many people yeah it's, it's almost unfair that you've met all these people and i wish i'd I wish I'd taken more pictures. <laughs> if anyone ever flukes a career like that, like I have, remember to take some pictures and stop, slow down, play some golf, well, stay that's one night extra, do. and yeah. don't feel like you've got to get your work done and get home because I've missed some moments. I wish I'd stayed an extra day mm -hmm. and yeah. just kind of soaked it up because it goes so quickly. Yeah. yeah. And there's been so many incredible moments, but yeah, it's that's, that's almost unfair that I've seen so much. Fantastic well, if advice. I can, if I can give you a compliment here, you know, it's, it's cool to hear you talk about like, what that moment felt like for you to be able to sit with Sevi and to feel like, oh my gosh, I've worked for this and this is a really cool thing. For us, you know, we started this company because we love golf, we love the sport, we're fans of the sport first, even before we're, you know, we yep. much more big, we're much bigger fans than we are athletes of the sport. And you got to help us live that same dream in our Sea Island shoot last October. Right, okay. As we're we were our late able, 20s too. Yeah, you know? sitting here in, you know, our, 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 some of us are late 20s, some of us are mid 20s. Um, experienced 20s. <laughs> experienced 20s. Yeah. Um, but, but being able to be on a, on a range, sitting there with Keith Mitchell and Luke Donald and, you know, a guy who's the European Ryder Cup captain and chatting with him, talking at, with him as we're walking onto his private jet. And, you know, for me, that was, that was my Seve moment. Yeah. And I hope you can take some pride in knowing you had that moment, but you've also given that moment. Well, listen, the, the best thing you can do is see it through younger people's eyes, right? As you get older, mm -hmm. you instinctively need more young people around you to give you that energy and to give you that. So I can see that moment through your eyes because at that moment, I'm naturally a little bit jaded and a little bit, it's yeah. become normal, right? Mm -hmm. And when you surround yourself with younger people doing it for the first time, you get that feeling back again because I can see you watching it and I can see it through yeah. your eyes yeah. and it reminds me how lucky I am to be there. And you want to, you want to pass those moments yeah. down, right? So yeah. there's no point keeping all that to yourself. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, and I know, you know, we've had some good times already in the time that we've working together. I am incredibly looking forward to 2024 yeah. and everything that you guys Same. have coming out and got yeah. going on. Like it's going to be, man, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I, I wish we could do more of it. It looks like Security has come in here already twice out. to kick us out of the PGA so show booth nice we're in. Time. So we're, we're going to have to wrap this one up, but I hope this is not the last time, of course, for the podcast, but like Tanner says, there's a lot more chances yep. of us working together. And we're excited to show some guys what you have coming up and some of the stuff that we can create Listen, together. Here there's a load year. more coming up, especially at Mizuno. I sh we shouldn't really plug stuff, but we've got so many young players coming through. Yeah. And again, that's the other thing about being an established company and a historic brand and being yep. an old person you need to bring lots and lots of fresh young blood in and yeah. that's what's going to happen whether it's you guys on the production side yeah. or the players we're working with whether that be Jonathan Yun who came to mm -hmm. Sea Island with us Great Marco Penge in the UK that's like the next wave of Mizuno and that's the that's mm -hmm. the exciting thing is seeing what's going to come in the next two and three years so yeah. you'll be along for the ride excited, excited. to be with it. you too alright well so, look yeah. forward to it appreciate it okay great we got Thanks someone talking you. on a walkie talkie over let's, here let's so let's, let's roll get let's get out of here <laughs> peel it down <laughs> <laughs>